Hey everybody, welcome back to the Overwatch League report. I'm Brian. I'm Ben. Ben, we have it's only been two weeks since we talked, and I feel like it's been years um, because so much has happened since the last time we talked. First of all, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm coming off a uh, off a couple of big uprising victories, so I Ooh. can't be any any, uh, <laughs> any uh any more excited. <laughs> yeah, no, really, it was a it was a great weekend to be rooting for the Boston Uprising. That is for sure. Yeah, and the, I don't have heart problems. I, <laughs> I don't know. So I'm not a Patriots fan, but I don't know how people who are Patriots fans and Uprising fans like yourself are alive at this point after yeah. like the last like season the Patriots had, and now this. This is too much. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, the, the definition of a uh, fourth quarter clutch. Every single uh, team the organization owns, I guess. I'll take it, man. It's been really fun to watch. Um, and, yep. you know, it's it's good for us for doing this show, being Uprising fans, to to be rooting for a team that's this fun to watch, you know? Yeah, this fun to watch and this underrated coming in uh, that are now in the top five overall, which is mm. crazy. Um, so, yeah, we can get into talking about it a little bit here. Well, yeah, let's start off by talking about some of the moves some of these teams made. And I... Perfect transition. We, or rather the Boston Uprising, traded for RCK. The traded note, our beloved note, we both are very big fans of. But yep. uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Why did they make the move and how has it panned out through one week? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm obviously a, a big fan of notes and an OG uh, Boston Uprising player. I have a note jersey mm-hmm. uh, and... Uh, and now he's on the uh, the Dallas Fuel, and we have RCK. Uh, I think a lot of people, when this trade was announced, were not super happy with this because, you know, there's basically only one OG Boston Uprising player left. It's just Kellex. Uh, mm-hmm. All the other players have left or been traded. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's sad to see Note go. Um, we haven't seen him play because the Fuel and the Outlaws both didn't play this week, so mm-hmm. we'll have to wait for uh, this upcoming week to see how the fuel put him to use. Mm-hmm. But uh, I was actually not down on this trade when it happened. It was, like, you know, sad and bittersweet in a way. But coming into a meta where we're seeing a lot more DPS players, a lot of Sombra being played, uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of players flexing to different roles and having mm-hmm. different compositions played on all these maps, and it's not just goats played every single map every single time. Right. We're seeing, we're still seeing goats, but it's like maybe forty to fifty percent of the time we're seeing mm-hmm. goats rather than you know ninety percent of the time. Right. In stage one, I think having a player like RCK, uh, having the flexibility that he brings, uh, particularly being able to have a Sombra on the team, even when we are playing goats, mm. uh, has added a ton of depth to this roster. Uh, and even just looking at the matches they played this um, this week, I don't think they would have won either match if they had Node in there instead of RCK. RCK was a huge factor in both matches. Uh, his Sombra play was really strong on uh, several maps that they had won. And his Diva play was a lot more uh, versatile in a lot of ways. Uh, if you if you look especially on uh, the King's Row or the um, the was it Blizzard World or was it Gibraltar where he had I think it was Blizzard World right where he had the really uh, insane self destruct to uh, bring them back from basically a lost fight mm. uh, and that would have been the difference between them winning or eventually winning and or losing the match in the spot so I think that uh, the trade has definitely played out uh, in the uprising's favor so far. Uh, it could be a situation where the trade works in both teams' favor. We'll just have mm. to wait and see how it forms in the fuel. Yeah, I mean, we obviously wish him nothing but the best. We're really excited to have RCK. I think uh, one of the tweets that got a lot of likes was uh, after one of RCK's big EMPs against the fight. It was like, oh, that's what that's like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not to not have it happen to you, but to yeah. see it happen to someone else. <laughs> Right, so that's what it feels like to be on the on the giving end of the EMP instead of the receiving end, like Boston has been 
Oh, it was tough that first stage, man. Oh my god, I yeah. don't need to tell you that was that was bad. And RCK was one of the people who did it to them the worst. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so very happy to see him here. Let's talk. Um, probably the one that sent like the most shock waves across the league. Let's talk about Defran retiring and how that's impacted Atlanta through this first week. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've definitely seen uh, a huge impact on Atlanta as they try and kind of rebuild their roster. Yeah, so these, uh, these so, suck now. You know, I think we can just say that safely. Fran hard carried the team through stage one. I mean, I would be hard carried, no, no, but no, he, no, was no, definitely, no. he was definitely so insane. Zaria, especially, mm-hmm. and he was you know, a very flexible player. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did a lot better than I think that we expected ha- coming in, mm-hmm. but he did have a lot of the issues that we had foreseen with his uh, just like uh, mental state. Mm-hmm. Um, and to clarify again, we're not. It's not a know, personal attack. Yes, it's not a personal attack. It's it's you know it's very clear at this point that the friend had issues with staying mentally engaged with mm-hmm. the team, uh, staying, uh, like keeping, uh, he has a lot of, you know, anxiety issues, mm-hmm. uh, et cetera. So like keeping his mental health good. Uh, I think that he just couldn't, you know, juggle that with playing competitively. I think that the streaming lifestyle is a lot more, uh, consistent for him, a mm-hmm. lot lower stress. Uh, I think it's, it's probably better for him in the long run, but it, it's a lot worse for the Atlanta Reign as a team, yeah. Uh, yeah. as we saw. <laughs> I mean, Baby Bay's uh, good, obviously, but the friends right. on another level, mechanically, yeah. just a great, a great player. Um, if you guys want to support the if you're a friend fan, I'm sure you probably already know, but he has his YouTube channel. You guys can look him up there. He's been playing Paladins. I've been watching a little bit of that, which has been pretty funny. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Atlanta, they had a tough week. They got reverse swept by the uprising. Um, and then they didn't play very well after that. I, I think we were talking in the group chat. And it was just like, man, they are shook from that that reverse sweep. And then it's like, well, maybe not. Maybe it's just like DeFran was that important to this team and the overall makeup, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, Baby Bay is uh, a great player. Uh, he has historically been weaker on the Zarya uh, mm-hmm. in the GOATS composition. He definitely played better than I think a lot of people expected him to, but still not up until that different level. Um, and then we also saw uh, Atlanta making two pickups here, one of which uh, we saw playing on the stage in, uh, I don't know if we're calling him Fry or FRD, like casters were very inconsistent with that. Right. His name. You gotta have the, the word. The, like it, it's F. It's spelled F R D, but F R D comes from a previous handle he had, which was fried. Uh, fried. Well, it was fried wiener, and then it was shortened with vowel without the vowels, and then it was shortened to just fried without the vowels. So just let him be fried wiener, I, I, you cowards. <laughs> yeah. Make the casters I mean, say know, that just like on a, ABC. It's like a, a hot dog, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> it's like a ro- roast on a wiener over a fire when you're uh, when you're out camping, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, I would but just, yeah, I just I, I'm going to say fried. Say uh, yeah, I'm going to say fried because that's like historically where it comes from. I'm mm-hmm. going to say fried because it's one syllable. I like one syllable things. Mm-hmm. Nice no, it, make, it makes sense. I mean, yeah. just given how, how it came about. So I'm with you on yeah. that. What, like I said, stood out to me was that Baby Bay – He's he's good at Zarya. He's not a bad Zarya, but they just weren't getting what they got from Defran. And honestly, I, I put him in the power rankings. I think I ranked them like the fifth or sixth worth team uh, in the league right now. And that's just where I think they're at. I don't know, Ben, if you disagree with that. I, was, I think I would agree that they're definitely down there. I don't know if I would rate them quite that low, maybe slightly higher than that, but still like Listen, their man, performance. Listen, I got to make hot takes. That's, uh, that's where yeah, I, I mean, their performance, I, I can't argue with that given their performance this week. Hmm. Uh, I think that there is definitely upside once the team might get some more chemistry, once they decide on whether they want uh, Daco or Fried in this off-tank hmm. position. Hmm. You would think that, because they had relatively good success with Daco in stage one, 
Um, like, I don't think DACA was the issue. Um, and because Popo and DACA have chemistry from uh, back when they played together in Contenders, mm. that it would make sense to keep them together. Um, but I don't know. Maybe they have faith that, uh, that Fred can, once uh, he has some more chemistry with the team, uh, perform uh, at a higher level. Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see uh, where they go and if they can kind of pick it up and you know rebuild this roster in a positive way. But I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited that Baby Bay's seeing play at the very least because I don't think he would have seen play in the shock at least for a yeah, while. No, probably not. Um, do you think that them... We know before the season started, DeFran didn't want to play and then kind of got talked into it. Do you think they'd be in a better position right now if they had just let him walk away then and had used that first stage to kind of find like a more permanent roster or what do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, it's tricky because they did have a, a positive win rate coming out of uh, stage one. They did make the, mm-hmm. uh, the playoffs in stage one. They didn't perform well in the playoffs, but they made the playoffs. Um, but so I, I think that they got like enough out of Defran where it might be worth it. And if they can turn this rebuild around quickly uh, and start winning some matches with this new roster, uh, then I think it might be okay. It's just going to be kind of a matter of of seeing uh, how quickly they can rebound. Um, I mean, I know preseason I talked about how them signing to friend was uh, probably a mistake um, Mm -hmm. because of, like, looking forward to something like this happening. Uh, But... I I think because of his performance, I can't fully say in hindsight that it was a mistake. Right. He was, <laughs> it's better to love and loss than to never have loved at all, right? right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> better to Plus, I don't get, I don't had get to friend pop off than the... to never have him pop off at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so what is the next big move you'd like to touch on? Uh, I think the next one we can talk about is um, Toronto signing uh, a player who kind of came out of nowhere after uh, kind of a surprise retirement announcement from Stellar. Mm. Uh, And then they picked up uh, a guy called I'm 37, who the joke is that he basically uh, speed ran professional Overwatch, uh, where his, his first professional Overwatch match happened basically a month ago. And now he's starting on a great team in Owl. So, what what do you what is your takeaway? Here? Um, I feel like someone made a deal with the devil. It was yeah. like, hey, let me be an amazing Overwatch player, and you can have my soul. Because yeah, this is I mean, ridiculous. He's, he's good. He's really he's really good. Um, as Jenny says, yeah. uh, when we. <laughs> shared his picture in the group chat she was like i'm 37 he looks 10 so got him burn <laughs> i mean i actually i think he he's like um he's one of the biggest uh korean overwatch players like in the whole scene he's like uh he's like six three he's like huge stack <laughs> i don't know he's in look 10 yeah but he's like a baby face maybe yeah maybe maybe that's maybe that's it i don't know that's just hilarious but yeah i that is super weird that he was able to get up there and then you have uh people like asking who almost made the league and get screwed so i'm sure he feels oh, super yeah. great right now <laughs> all those players who were like oh man i've been in contenders for like th- three years i'm mm-hmm. not in the league yet and then here's this guy who just comes in through it i don't know him too well outside of the uh news stories and stuff was he a professional or was he like a competitive overwatch player before this was he professional in another sport what uh what's his deal man i i actually know very little about him other than i, I started hearing about him uh, a couple weeks ago when he mm-hmm. started on second wind i watched some tape about him because there were like all those rumblings that you know he was uh like pushing through the scene super fast because mm-hmm. he got signed by second wind super fast after his like pass to pro run and then he was on second wind for literally like a, a week and change, and uh, and then he got signed to Towel. Um, yep, like I said, he, made I a deal like, with the devil. Yeah, I I don't know. He's like, you saw his performance with the Defiant. Obviously, the Defiant like lost to Boston. Mm-hmm. Uh, they turn around and they won their next match. Yeah, uh, and I think that 
you know, he really adds a lot of uh, variety to this roster. Uh, his hero pool is really good for where meta is right now. Uh, mm-hmm. His Tracer is super strong. Uh, he didn't really play a ton of McCree. He mostly played uh, Tracer and Farah. Mm-hmm. His Tracer especially was insane on uh, on Blizzard World. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, I don't know. He's, he's a great sign. I mean, a lot of people were speculating when uh, the Defiant lost Stellar that they would either pick up Climax or I'm 37. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were a lot of people who were super hyped about the idea of I'm 37, just like breaking out into well, yeah, owl the and, idea of yeah. someone going yeah. up that quickly it's enticing yeah, yeah so yeah. um it's been good they had a overall decent weekend one and one reverse sweep hurts but you know the, i i don't think it's gonna affect them too too much going on um do we want to talk a little bit about the florida mayhem the aptly named mayhem after the bombshell <laughs> <laughs> that they just dropped on us. What was that Thursday or Wednesday? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it kind of all runs together at this point. There's so many moves that happen, but yeah. Uh, yeah so we have uh, the Florida Mayhem, who claimed uh, in I think October of last year when they were doing their rebuild, uh, originally before the new season, uh, that they were, were not going to do an all Korean roster, and then right. cut to uh, six months later. And they're doing an all-Korean <laughs> roster. They're not only cutting all of their non-Korean players, they're dropping two of their non-Korean coaches, including their head coach. Yeah, I, whenever uh, whenever someone makes a declarative statement out of nowhere like that, you can pretty much tell that they're flirting with the idea of doing that. Mm-hmm. It's like when Nick Saban yeah, like- said he wasn't going to leave the Dolphins for Alabama, and then a week later left the Dolphins for Alabama. Yep. And then was awful at Alabama, as everyone knows. I'm guessing the people listening to this might not have a large crossover with college football, so I'm just going to take this opportunity, Ben. <laughs> I can I can hear the uh, the derision in your voice. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just so bitter still. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, so I guess, one, how do you think they did this weekend? Uh, they did slightly better, but slightly better is not going to cut it. The C9, uh, oh, which was great. C9 hard on, uh, <laughs> on uh, Junkertown. Which is always <laughs> fun for us. Anytime a team oh, yeah. C9s, lots of fun to watch. It, it was, this wasn't even like a chaotic fight like Shane no? I had on Dorado or anything like that. Mm-hmm. This was what literally nothing was happening. They were just kind of dancing around the point. And Zephyr decides, I don't want to stand the point anymore. <laughs> yeah, the, the fight off. was over and no one was coming. Yeah. <laughs> that was the thing. They could have gotten it, like, pretty decently far before they got engaged again. And... Oh, yeah. No, they could have pushed maybe, like, up to the um, to the turn of the U on uh, the second point. Yeah. So... And, you know. <laughs> just, I, I loved it, too, because the camera wasn't on him on the cart yeah. and the match just, it just ends. ended <laughs> and, <laughs> like, wait what yeah every single person was like what happened and even the announcers <laughs> were like what uh what happened and they went and like did like the angle in there and you just see him just like jump yeah. off the cart with tifa it's just like yeah. oh my god something that yeah. happens like quick play or like bronze matches is not like a overwatch league thing yeah, yeah, I mean, that was not, I mean, that was obviously the worst thing, the most egregious mistake that Zephyr made in that match, but, like, that match was, like, uh, time after time, just Zephyr making mistake after mistake, just whiffing bombs, just, like, being out of position, uh, overcommitting, making bad calls, and, you know, if only that team had a uh, pretty strong off tank player who has showed himself to be uh, a competent uh, diva in stage one. Whew. If only. <laughs> if only that happened. Uh, there was yeah, a, if only Twitter, they had, yeah. There's a Twitter thread that was literally just Zephyr's throwing. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was it was bad. It was so yeah. bad. He looks like me out there. It's not safe. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it just looks like the divas I see in play. Yeah, it was, oof. Jesus Christ. 
So yeah, um, how about the departed players? Who do you think we has a real chance to resurface somewhere in the league? Because they all seemed a little salty, understandably. And they all yeah. put out the same tweet that said, uh, due to Florida Mayhem going this direction, I'll be focusing on streaming. But I think we'll see some of them real soon. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, I, I was just referencing, obviously, McVavy. I think that uh, there are several teams in the league who could use an uh, upgrade in the acting position. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think one of them is uh, Washington Justice, who their weakest player is probably Sansom. Yeah. Uh, and I, I know I was speculating after uh, God's, uh, you know, was announced to be uh, a free agent after leaving uh, second and he got picked up instead by uh, Toronto Defiance Aca- uh, Academy team. Mm-hmm. So uh, he is not being signed an owl yet. Uh, so the, there is still a possibility that Washington might be looking to upgrade their, uh, their off tank. You know, maybe, maybe yeah. they want to make some changes. They, they definitely need to make some changes still. Arc is not enough, as we saw. Mm-hmm. And if um, if you're interested, take a perfect moment. If you don't follow yeah. me on Twitter, first of all, why? Just tons of quality content for free there from me all the time. Um, I am writing for the Game House, covering the Washington Justice. So hopefully I'll be able to cover the story where they pick him up. Hopefully, hopefully they make some kind of move. If you were the GM, you'd be making that move right now. Is what you're saying? I would be at least scouting. uh, I I don't know if McCravey McCravey specifically is uh, Mm -hmm. is who I would go for, but I think that he's not a bad choice. I think that all three of the players that were dropped are probably at least like good uh, backups for a lot of these mid tier teams. Right. Uh, Apply is is strong. I know we talked preseason about how uh, I was surprised that Apply. Uh, was only a two-way contract. The price contract was upgraded to uh, full time mm-hmm. before, uh, you know, the mayhem made their unceremonious roster changes. <laughs> it was upgraded um, then downgraded real quick. Yeah. So, um, I, yeah, we'll see. I, I don't think the mayhem really have a shot, even with these changes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that they basically took. Uh, a bottom tier team and upgrade to like a, a mid to bottom tier team. Mm-hmm. Um, and at this point, it's probably too late for them to, to make a run for it at the end of the season. So we'll yeah, see. With only 28 games this season, it's, it's not yeah. looking good for them. Nope. All right. So anything else you want to cover as far as moves go? No, I know we spent a lot of time on that. We did kind of a, a hybrid of talking about Yeah, which I actually kind of like. I think yeah. it's a good way to go. So, not talking about that, what do you want to touch on in terms of what actually happened on the field? I don't know if that's the Yeah, we can talk on about it. On the stage? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, on the stage, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. You can talk about a couple of the other uh, big uh, downturns that we've seen um I would say that the big two downturns we can talk about are from uh, two Chinese teams who yes. were relatively strong in stage one. Uh, they have similar sounding names. We have the Guangzhou Charge and the Hangzhou Spark. Yeah, what uh, happened? Out. Other than Vancouver happened in the Spark. Which, I mean, you know, Vancouver happened in the Spark. Them, but... but it wasn't... I see. You could say, like, you know, Vancouver makes any team or most teams look, you know, silly and incompetent. Mm-hmm. The Spark looked real silly and incompetent. They didn't look match. like they belonged on the Overwatch yeah. League stage in that match. No. No, they looked like a like a contenders team or even like a trials team just mm-hmm. got like pinned up against like the best team in the world, which Vancouver probably are. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, it, was, it was bad when like. Their after matches, it just like showed the face cams of Vancouver, mm-hmm. and they're just laughing. They're not yeah. even taking it seriously at all. What was it? I think it was the uh, uh, they their cap on uh, Kings Row or something. After they like uh, they like basically sped run the map, and yep. they were just like laughing after. Yep, yep, that's exactly the moment I was talking about. Where the yeah. the spark did really well. They had th- oh, yeah. over three minutes left in their time. They did great. And then Vancouver was like, oh, we'll just set a record. Like, it's not a big deal. Yeah. It's not, it's, it's not hard. 
you could say that the spark did well on the attack on that map um, for the first round, but a lot of that came from basically a lucky fire strike on Haxel on point right. A and just snowballing off of that. So, I mean, they played okay on attack, but they, you know, a lot of that was you know, maybe not fully 100% skill based uh, right. necessarily. No, that's definitely uh, fair. I mean, even yeah. the commentators are saying, like, well, they're probably not going to get another, like, pick on Haxel like that. They're probably not going to let Haxel die this time. Yeah. So, like, yeah, probably probably not. All right, so is there anything else you yeah. want to cover before we sign off for this episode? I mean, just to go in a little bit more with the spark, uh, yeah. you saw we saw uh, Assassin come in for the first time since he's been signed uh, on Maps 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, he's really good on Farah hmm. and really not super great on Diva, in my opinion. Right, right. <laughs> so I think a lot of their issues on those maps were when they were forced to swap to a ghost comp, hmm. uh, they just couldn't hang a lot of the reason because Assassin couldn't perform. And you, you saw it later on when they brought Rhea back in. Uh, where Rhea was doing a lot of uh, a lot of work on for since Gibraltar on that four, mm. uh, and I think that you know maybe that experiment, and then there also their competition experiments on Hanamura were a little iffy, and then also uh, you can look at Godspeed on Sombra mm. was kind of just like a hot mess. Uh, there's uh, one fight in particular at the end of Vancouver's attack on Kings Row mm. uh, where um, Godspeed's trying to set up an EMP. And Danu uh, throws in a self destruct, mm-hmm. and uh, Godsby still commits to the EMP even after the self destruct is uh, like initiated. Right. And like it's just wasted, and they lose the fight because the fight was going to be lost either way. Right. And you could literally see, like, you can see from Godsby's perspective, the the um, the sound cue for the self destruct. You can see in his field of view. Janu uh, being sped in, uh, and there's like a, a one and a half, two second window there where he could make the decision to not EMP, but he still does, and he still commits it to basically what's going to be a lost fight. Right. I think just decision making like that is just real sloppy. Um, where he could have, they could have reset there, tried to jump back at the point, and then EMP and won the fight from there mm. with more, uh, more of an even fight, more you know, uh, like even. Uh, Economy coming into that last fight where it had been on the point rather than in front of the point, but still, mm-hmm. uh, it would have been a lot easier to try and uh, try and potentially stall a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just like split second decision making was real messy in that instance, was just an example that I, that I saw of like kind of a greater issue that the team showed in general. Mm-hmm. And the charge for their part, they got four owed. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the Harris. Bye. That should be the thing that goes. That should be the lead. Yeah. It's like four zero by Paris. Yeah. And then their other match. Uh-huh. Uh, they played against the Shock and also got four zero. Yikes. Yeah, but I mean the Shock are good at least. The Shock. Like, I mean great. the Shock are probably the third best team in the in the, uh, in the league. Mm-hmm. So like it's, they're expected to lose against the Shock even right. if the Chargers. It was good. the Paris. They're not expected to get swept by Paris. Yeah. Especially on the meta where Paris is kind of iffy, in my opinion. So, do you think that this uh, non goats meta is just not for them, or what's what's the problem here? I I don't know what happened with the charge. I think they they just seem like lost in a lot of their fights. Mm-hmm. They don't really seem to have uh, like a plan coming into a lot of their engagement. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't really have the cohesion they show in a lot of their matches in stage one mm. uh, a lot of people talked about how the reason they missed the playoffs in stage one is because their strength of schedule was bad mm. uh and they played vancouver twice and they played i think they played new york i think they mm. uh, double check that but they they had difficult matchups in stage one a lot of people are like oh they're a good team they just had uh rough matchups but it looks like they if anything kind of had good matchups on the matchups that they won mm. and now they've kind of you know shown themselves to be a an average to below average team at that 
Yeah, I mean, that's the definition, right, of an average team. You beat the teams you should beat, but then you lose to the, the better teams. So, yeah, and you lose to the Eternal, who then get swept by Chengdu. Well, <laughs> Chengdu, I don't know what to make of them, but they're fun to watch. I know that. Oh, they're so fun to watch. And this is this is their meta. Like yeah. this is this is what they're like. There's so many ball compositions that Amen can go crazy on. Oh yeah. There's so many weird DPS like comps that they can run. Mm. Like this is like what's being played now, and like what's good now is what they were playing when it wasn't good last stage. Right. And still <laughs> doing well. And still like kind of surprising teams and making them not able to react yep. to their unpredictability of picks so i don't know they're really fun to watch i like them a oh, they're lot. so fun um, so fun and, one of the funnest teams to watch yeah. not the funnest team to watch and pandas yeah it's a great it's a great mascot i know we <laughs> we hated on it when the first only because they're called the hunters they should just be called the pandas i would like them even yeah, more I mean, if they were just the pandas yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I have no strong feelings one way or another on that, Brian. <laughs> oh, man. That's probably a more creative name than that, but, I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hunters and Panda doesn't go together. And their T is a sword. A panda doesn't have a sword. Right, what are you doing here, guys? Uh, we're not going to get into this. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this is an aside. We are going to get it. <laughs> This is going to go in hours. I complain about it. This has already been beaten to death. <laughs> out there, their team women's mascot makes no sense. Oh, man. All right, man. Anything else you want to cover before we sign off? Um, maybe just like a couple of uh, matches to watch uh, for next week. Uh, I'm excited to watch both of the Defiance matches mm-hmm. next week against the Fusion and uh, against the Fuel because I'm curious to see if the Fusion... Uh, can actually hold their own against a team that, you know, they're supposedly supposed to be approximately as good as. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also because I'm curious to see how the Fuel do now with Note on the roster. Right. Um, and then another matchup I'm looking at that might be less exciting or flashy is the Rain versus the uh, Justice at the end of the week on Sunday, uh, where we can kind of yes. see <laughs> how the Rain... Uh, are able to do a match that they should, in theory, win. Right. And maybe they can kind of snowball off of that. Mm-hmm. Or maybe the Justice can catch a win off of uh, a rain team that's struggling. Florida will feel real dumb if if they're passed by the Justice after everything they've done. Yeah. And as far as the Defiant Infusion, that's like a real matchup of like, are these teams good? I don't yeah. know. Nobody knows. Where hopefully yep. this match will like tell us, okay, yeah, they are good. One of these teams is actually good. But I think there's compelling arguments for both sides for both teams. Yeah. I mean, I personally think that the Defiant are the stronger team from yeah, what we've I seen. I think well, the... yeah. But we'll see. I mean, the Fusion could surprise us. I mean, a lot of the Fusion's losses have come from them being forced to play, um, you know, in situations with uh, with players that they weren't practicing with or mm-hmm. who are off their role, and their other losses have come to like really strong teams like New York. Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe the Fusion are good. Maybe the Fusion are overrated. Yeah. Maybe the Defiant are good. Maybe the Defiant are overrated. We're gonna find. I mean, the Fusion for me, like they just don't pass the eye test. Like yeah. watching them, and I like tweeted it even now. And I was like, did the Fusion secretly suck? Are they secretly a bad team? Have they yep. just had a really easy schedule? I don't know. I mean, we'll find out by the end of the series, yeah. though. I mean, yeah, they I, they dropped a map uh, against uh, the Mayhem, so that mm-hmm. kind of gives you an idea. Like they 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 could have lost against the Mayhem, or they could have gone to map five against. That's the actually mayhem. why I tweeted that when they lost the map yeah. to the Mayhem. I'm like, they, are they bad? What are we doing here? <clears throat> Yeah, we'll see. All right, Ben, where can the people find you? You can find me uh, on Twitter at Ben Sharon. Uh, I've been tweeting a little bit more about uh, Overwatch League. Uh, the issue is I get I get so into the matches that like yeah, total focus on the exactly. matches. I forget to like interact and tweet and stuff. So. Yeah, you want to like come up with something witty, but then you're like, oh wait, I I yeah, missed yeah. that. Too late. That's the that's <laughs> the problem because it's like you can think of it at the moment, but Overwatch moves so fast, you like get it out. A minute later and it's already like eh, everyone's moved on yeah right um yeah you can follow me 
at the fake Ryan Mar on Twitter. You can also read, uh, you can also read my recaps and previews and just generally everything about the Washington Justice on thegamehouse.com. You just go there, you click on esports, Overwatch, Washington Justice, and you'll see my stuff. And you can follow Wicked Good Everything on Twitter at Wicked Good Every. Oh no, sorry. You can follow Wicked Good Everything on Twitter at WG Everything. On Instagram, at Wicked Everything. Of course, here on YouTube, youtube.com slash Wicked Everything. And on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Wicked Everything. I'm going to be streaming tonight by the time you watch this. Um, I'm going to be playing some Apex Legends. Even if it goes bad, probably Overwatch. So you can laugh at how much I suck at Overwatch, even though I talk mad shit about everybody who are professionals, which is always fun. Yeah. Yeah. So they, I mean, yeah. that's sports journalism, right? It's, that's the point. <laughs> but I'm not afraid. Come make fun of me, please. As long as you're watching the video. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell notification if you really like it. Check out the Game House on YouTube and on their website. Make sure you follow us on Twitter. And, of course, have a great rest of your day.